Hello, welcome back to Future Fiber. This is your host Jenny, and today we're going to be doing a little podcast episode. I think we're at number six, five now, um, which is wild that we've come this far. I feel like I have to do these intro things like four times over before I get the motors kind of going. You need that warm up time where you start sounding like a person and less like you're reading off a script that you've kind of half written in your head. Today's episode is going to be not a lot of exciting updates, honestly, um, but that's like the that's the joy of a podcast episode, right? You just see the real time progress of garments. Uh, and I think that's very realistic <laughs> for knitting. So I'm not going to stress about it too much. Let's talk about what I'm wearing today. Um, so I'm wearing a scarf made by me. Uh, this is the I Love Stripes scarf by Polystrict. I talked about uh, its making process in a podcast episode a couple, I think two episodes ago. So go check it out if you want to hear more about that. But I threw this on really quick because I just had this t-shirt and jeans on, high-waisted jeans. And I don't know about y'all, but like whenever I... <laughs> Whenever I have just a t-shirt and high-waisted jeans on, I feel like I feel like a character from like The Outsiders or like West Side Story. I feel like I should be calling uh, my friends Pony Boy and uh, like standing over fire escapes menacingly, like going like this. So <laughs> to break that up, I put on a scarf. Um, stay golden, everybody. Um, I totally also realize that this joke is probably lost to people who are not part of the American high school uh, English class system. So I apologize, but I had to had to make the joke, you know. So let's start with our working. No, 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 no. We have some FOs. We have some finished objects. Let's look at those. The first exciting one. We have socks, ruffle socks. Um, I think the last podcast episode I had done up to like about like there of the cuff of one sock, and then now I've now I have two. I've worn these once already, so they're kind of like crusty looking. So like, you know, excuse <laughs> excuse that. But let's talk about them. Okay, ruffle socks. I think last time I talked about them, I mentioned how I was doing one sock how the pattern recommends which is cuff down and then the other one i thought about doing um toe up so i did do that and i have my results can you tell which of these is toe up and which of these is cuff down because i also kind of asked people this on instagram and a lot of people said i don't know i can't tell and i can't tell I mean, I know which one is which because I made them, but then I feel like if I looked at them, I couldn't be able to tell like which one is which. So I would consider that a success. Uh, I think it also helps that the heel construction is a standard like short row, German short row heel, or you could do a shadow wrap heel if you like that instead. Um, but then what else should I talk about? Uh, I kept all the stitch counts basically exactly the same for both. I just reversed the construction. So my main gripe that I had with the regular original construction was two. One was that the ruffles were really annoying to do because you have to cast on a lot. This is proprietary information. I feel like you can look up how to do a ruffle. Like ruffles are not like that uncommon, right? Anyway, <laughs> this ruffle is done by casting on a lot of stitches and then decreasing rapidly at a you know designated rate until you get to the number of stitches uh, for your size of the sock. And I found that super fiddly because trying to cast on like over a hundred stitches with like fingering weight sock yarn wasn't really my favorite and then also after that after you've cast on you immediately decrease in the next round which was also not very fun because i cast on very tight uh, i understand that that is a personal problem but it just didn't work for me 
And so this is the cup down sock. And you can tell that the ruffles are there, but they're not as, you know, prominent. Uh, the second part of the sock making process for this that I did not like was after you knit a certain amount, you have to kind of knit together uh, the work so that you get this folded over. What do you call this? I know it for like, if you work with a circular sock machine, you call it a hung hem uh, sock. So it kind of looks like that, right? You have this like folded over doubled uh, edge and it is stretchy, so that's good because you knit it together. Uh, but I don't, I found that process really, really fiddly um, because how the pattern is dropped is to pick up certain stitches on a separate needle and then to knit them together. I found that not very fun. <laughs> And you also have to do it like inside out. So you're trying to pick up uh, stitches from the pearl bump side, I think. No, no, no. From the knit side. I don't know. It wasn't very good. I, I was never really good at even doing like lifelines, for example, like making sure you have one straight row all the way across, um, picking it up like that. So it was just going to be not very fun for me, um, it, but it turned out okay. And then I made the sock. The rest was fine. Went very quick. Uh, short row heel although in the instruction I was confused about how they wrote the instruction for the short row heel I found that a little bit unusual from the ways that I've done it so I frankly I don't even think I read through it very carefully I know there's a video tutorial <laughs> on the petite knit website so if you're confused go look at that I'm sure that those videos are always good I just wasn't thinking and I didn't want to open up a video so I just did it how I usually do short row heels um, but, and this fits pretty well. I think I knitted a little bit too short, but that's my problem. Um, I'm not used to knitting socks cuff down really. So I wasn't able to properly gauge how long I should be knitting. There are, re there are measurements in the, uh, the pattern. So just knit to that. I don't know why I didn't do that. I don't know. That's, that's my fault, but it fits fine. Okay. So this is the toe up sock. It looks pretty similar, right? Like I can't tell the difference. So, but there is a difference. And that is that, I don't know about you, but I feel like the top ruffle is a lot more ruffly than the, the cuff down version. And I think that has to do with the tension. I bind off a lot looser than I cast on. So I think that's why it looks a lot more ruffly. Um, but I basically kept the same technique as everything is the same. I just reversed the pattern basically. Um, and it worked out fine. The edge, uh, sewing down or not sewing down, knitting down the edge, I thought was much easier on this because you could pick up on the pearl bumps. Um, and I just didn't cast like I didn't pick up stitches on a separate needle. I just picked up and knit together as I went along. And I thought that worked fine. And then um, the, the increases for the ruffles, um, I used the same rate of increase, right? As the, the cuff down sock. Um, so I basically got to the same number of stitches that I started with, cast it on with on the other sock. Um, but the, uh, like increase method that I used was yarn overs. I think you could do knit front back and it'll look exactly the same basically. So just choose what you want. <laughs> I recommend it. If you are a, if you have a preference for knitting toe up, totally do that. I think this works fine. And I enjoyed this process a lot more and it went a lot faster than when I did a two pattern. And I think this is also a really good candidate for toe up as well, because uh, a lot of the things that people say about toe up socks that they don't like is that the uh, the cuff edge is either too loose because you're doing like Jenny stretchy bind off and it looks not great, <laughs> looks a little loose, or you're doing um, 
you're doing some other kind of bind off and it's a little too tight doesn't get over your foot as well as uh, you know having done a cup down and with long tail cast on and I totally get that and I'll talk about that in a little bit with this other sock that I cast on um, but this since you're knitting together before you cast off the cast off edge is on the ruffle so you still have the same amount of stretch on the cuff here as well as this cuff I, I think it's a really good candidate for a toe up uh, sock pattern so will I recommend the pattern as it is I'm not exactly sure it looks very cute I am pleased with it but I would not knit it the way that it suggests so I would I would you know I would give this pattern like a three out of five now I'm ranking patterns like look at me I didn't even do that in any of my other episodes so this is totally erratic take this with a grain of salt um oh I didn't talk about the yarns that I used did I or I probably did in the last episode but to reiterate I I was using two sock yarns that are of similar color uh that I just had lying around one is uh biz sock from biscotti yarns and it's just like in the cream color and then the other sock yarn that I used is Cascade 220 the not super wash one <laughs> um also in the color cream I believe I don't really ha I don't know if I have any more finished objects let's get into work in progress so I have half a finished object so this is still a work in progress I guess I just saw this yarn laying around like I have a basket of yarns just sitting in my room with a bunch of like single skein yarns or um, just scrap yarns and a lot of it is sock yarns because of the advent calendar that I got last year so these were just sitting around and I was like oh let me just cast one on <laughs> um and I didn't think I had enough I had 50 grams of this and then I had 50 grams of this so I didn't feel like I had enough to knit a single color sock so I used this for contrast the uh, heel toe cuff and this is like the main color and these I believe are well they're both from the advent calendar I think they're both this sock by Biscotti Yarns yeah it's a good sock yarn I like it it's very soft um the pattern the sock the sockening in question this is the Downton Abbey socks uh I, it's a free pattern on Ravelry I forgot the name of the pattern designer I'm so sorry but I'll put it here and it's a lace pattern and I chose a lace pattern because I was sick of frankly sick of knitting all these uh, vanilla socks so I wanted something with a little bit of visual interest so there's that it was a simple enough lace pattern where I could memorize it and uh, take it from there I made a couple of mistakes on this <laughs> made a couple of mistakes on this pattern I read the starting number of stitches wrong <laughs> I think it was like I don't I don't remember the exact number but it was supposed to be like you start with uh, 16 stitches on each needle so it, it should have been like 32 or something but then I started with 16 total <laughs> so the toe is like kind of pointy um, which I guess isn't like a huge problem because it's stretchy but yeah I and now I have to mirror this on the other side because I've already done this which is a shame uh some features about the sock that I thought were pretty interesting it has kind of this gusset shape shaping to it uh this is a toe up sock but it has this gusset shaping kind of like the flegal heel but the rate was different um which really threw me off uh so I think I also like started the gusset increase a little bit too late so it looks really long on the foot but I have a long foot <laughs> so it fits okay actually um and then you do a short row turn you I don't know if you can see that here and the, but then you still have to decrease up this way so it creates a gusset um I thought that was interesting 
um even with that i i see why they did it because this is this lace pattern doesn't have as much stretch as like the stockinette part so i get why they did that but i don't know i don't think it looks that nice it might just be that I like didn't do a great job of pick, uh, decreasing or whatever, but I don't think it looks the best. And um, the even with the gusset, like the lace pattern around here, like this this part of the foot is still a little bit tight going over my feet. Um, and then the uh, stitch count for the cuff of the sock was really small i think it was like it, it was definitely under 60 stitches and it has to do that because of the the lace pattern to keep that consistent you do have to have like not a lot of stitches i guess and it doesn't fit the best um this is actually pretty tight going over my foot um the I think I might have to rip out the cuff and uh, rebind off um, because this I was using that method of Jenny's stretchy bind off where I do uh, where I don't add the yarn over for every single stitch casting off I do like half the amount of stitches of yarn over and it didn't really it's not as stretchy as it could be so it, I can get over my foot. It's just not, it's not as pleasant <laughs> going over as some of my other socks. So I think I need to do that again. But overall, I think it looks pretty cute. And this was mostly a sash busting project and it's a free pattern. So like who can really complain? Um, I thought the instructions for the, uh, the stitch pattern was not as clear. Um, the original, the, the pattern designer is French and there is an English version um, so I don't know if it was a language thing or it, or if it was just me being stupid, but uh, this it's kind of this like eyelet-ish pattern here, and the way that you do that is you um, decrease, and then you knit one row, and then you kind of go into in between the two decreased stitches, and then pull your working yarn um, out. To create a stitch i don't think i explained that correctly so anyways I, ca I can understand why it was so difficult to explain um in word form i kind of wish there was a video for it uh but eventually i figured it out so you know we're here no harm done something to keep in mind if you want to try out these uh downtown abbey socks uh, it was fun to do a lace pattern uh for the socks it was a little bit more of mental gymnastics than something vanilla, but I think that was good because this went pretty fast as well. So I will do that for the second sock. I don't, I think I have enough yarn. I don't think I should run out, but um, you never know. I'm always playing yarn chicken. I, it, I win at a rate of about 50%, so. <laughs> Second work in progress that I see is <laughs> my two Matis. I'm still working on them. Um, the first one is this one. I am almost done with the sleeve, one sleeve, but I ran out of yarn. So now I have to cannibalize the yarn from the other arm. Um, and the reason why I'm cannibalizing from the other arm and not, not from the bottom hem is because first of all, I was too lazy to unpick this double the sewn hem <laughs> at the time but also uh to do the fold over hem the pattern instructs that you do a row of purl um stitches and so i can't just you know undo this sleeve and pick up the stitches and just keep knitting i have to rip back until the purl stitches that I did so I had to do that anyway so I figured why not do that by just you know using it as the other arm so you know it's getting there I think it it looks good um I tried it on the other day and I feel like the, I could definitely stand to lo lose like about that much from the 
the body without it looking really dumb. So we'll see. I really hope I don't have to buy another yarn, a uh, skein of this. Um, Cause I've already, I don't know if I said this, but when I was knitting this, I only bought two skeins of this yarn and I'm holding the yarn double. So I had to buy another skein and then that still wasn't enough, so I bought another skein. So I bought this yarn like three times already, so I really hope I don't have to do that again. And it, this isn't in my local yarn shop. I have to order it online from somewhere. So I hope I don't have to do that again. That would be really unfortunate. But I'm making good progress. Speaking of good progress, my second Mati. Oh my goodness. Oh, I didn't mention the yarn for the other one, but you guys have already heard it like three times. It's Chapel, Chopel Vol Boots in the color numbers, some numbers. It, it's, it'll be down in the description. <laughs> um, this one, uh, this is Hedgehog Fibers Renaissance uh, sock yarn in color Renaissance held with a color mart, uh, mohairy kind of alpaca blown yarn thing. We have one sleeve. We have two sleeves. Oh my God. Now we're working on the body. Wow. Amazing. Are those sleeves, now that I'm looking at them, they're mega long. <laughs> so I don't know how I'm going to fit. I like my sleeves really long, so maybe it won't be that big of a problem. But I might have overdone it. <laughs> but it, that's okay because uh, the body right now um, where I've stopped working on the body was right after I was done with, I think I knit about a centimeter of the body and then started working on the sleeve instead. So I've got, I don't, I haven't decided what length this should be. Uh, I don't want everything I own to be cropped. So I definitely wanted to hit belly button and go a little bit below that. Um, I might just knit until I use up all of the yarn. And I think that might be a good tactic. But I, you know, the body is just stuck in it. So I feel like it's going to go, well, depending on how I feel, uh, it's going to go either really fast or really slow. Um, it, it always is just, you know, whenever I feel like I have something good to watch, then I can really get steamrolling on the stuck in it round and round. But if I don't, then it takes me forever because I don't want to knit on it because I think it's boring. So I have this much left from, let's see, I think I knit, I'm trying to think if I only used one skein or I think it was like one and some change skeins for the both of the arms and I have about this much left, I don't know how many grams this is. Um, maybe it's like 20 grams am I being generous and then I still have a full skein so I'm going to get some decent length on the body and I have about this much left of the yarn um, th that's on the cone and I started out with 150 grams and I don't know how much is on here now but it seems like it'll be enough for me to finish the body so maybe next podcast I will have this done which will be really nice because you know it's still kind of cold um in New York so I feel like I could get like a couple wears out of this if I finish this um and I would really like something that's that I can just pull over on top of a t-shirt or a shirt that I have on before I go outside um, because the only thing, only knitted garment that I really use for that purpose right now is my zipper sweater by Petite Knit. And I, I like it. Um, but I don't, I don't know if I necessarily want to have another zipper sweater. So I, I think I want some variants and like, um, garments that fill that purpose. So hoping this will be it. Exciting progress on this one. Speaking of exciting progress. I don't know. I'm, I'm calling everything exciting. It's just exciting for me. I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> this is a hobby that I do for myself. So I gotta be excited. I gotta be hyped up for myself, right? So Ingrid Sweater by Petite Knit. I'm so sorry. This like, 
episode is very petite knit heavy. This was not planned. Um, I'll try and sprinkle in some variety in the next one. It's just that I own, I do own a lot of our patterns because I bought them all in like the beginning of my knitting journey. So I'm like my uh, iPad is like half petite knit. Okay, so Ingrid sweater. Woo! Okay, I've joined in the body. So we have sleeve holes now, which is exciting. And now I'm on the first section um, of the body that you do after you've joined, which is the double moss stitch. It's scrunched up right now, so you can't really tell, but this, yeah, this section. And I think last podcast episode, I talked about how for this rib pattern, I wasn't I was going to decrease the number of stitches or rows that I do to kind of like make the proportions of the sweater similar to the sample um, since this is knit uh, totally off gauge. <laughs> the yarn is Jill Draper Makes Stuff Empire, which is Aaron Waite yarn. You know, the I was reading about like that particular yarn the other day and I found out that it was made from Rambouillet uh, sheep yarn sheeps fiber and I thought that was interesting because I've never used Rambouillet before it feels it definitely feels different from um, some of the other wool um, that I've worked with it's more squishy I feel like I don't know I don't necessarily think this just because of uh, the weight of the yarn I just feel like it's 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 not scratchy but it, it feels hard you know it doesn't feel like merino um it's just it feels very bouncy the yarn has a lot of bounce to it um even the yarn I feel like it it has like a little bit of stretch to it that um I don't know if you can see that oh yeah so I just have to be careful not to like pull super tight as I knit. Otherwise it's going to end up being very like, <laughs> like, like an armor almost. So I have to keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, progress coming along pretty good. I still haven't decided what I want to do about the neckline yet. I'm just going to finish the rest of the body and then put on the sleeves and we're going to decide what to do. Uh, what did I do with this rib section? Oh, I think so the back. Let's go to the back. The back rib section, I uh, I think the original pattern tells you to do like 22 rows. I ripped back like four rows, so I did 18 rows. Um, and that made me lose about an inch, half an inch, around there. And I think the proportions are better. Uh, the arm side is still massive, so I don't have to, you know, this is going to fit. I, I am still debating on what to do about the the faux cable section. I don't know if I want to do... I'm just going to have to, you know, knit it up. Knit up this moss stitch section. This, this is supposed to be four repeats. And I've done two. So it's going to be like that long. And then like if I do the double cable section, it's going to come up to there. So I will just have to make a decision when I get to that point. Um, I might just do three repeats of the moss stitch so that I can have a little bit extra room um, for the, the cable pattern. Making it up as I go, like who cares, right? That's, that's the joy of knitting. You can just do whatever you want. Unlike sewing where you have to be very meticulous about measurements. I think that's all the big sweater projects. What else did I show last time? I sh oh socks. I probably should have shown this before, but I found the other ball of yak. Uh, yak. I found the other four. <laughs> I found the other ball of yarn. Um, the Chopo wool Zauer ball in Garden Party is a color. Um, I knew I had this somewhere and you know what where I found it in a purse so I cast on the second sock and this for 
uh, reminder, this was the sock that I worked on. Um, and this is the one with the flegal heel. And then I had to switch to the other color, um, which is Cascade to 20 uh, fingering in Sage. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, do you guys wear wool socks in the summer? I feel like in the summer, I don't typically wear socks as much. Um, but do you like, do you use cotton sock yarns in the summer or do you just wear wool socks yeah. or do you not wear socks at all? I feel like through the summer, I will be still doing a lot of sock knitting because it's smaller. So I feel like it would feel less gross <laughs> than like a big fluffy sweater to knit on during the summer. But yeah, we'll see. This room gets super hot <laughs> in the summer. So you might, you might not see a ton of um, wooly project. This work in progress is still going the crochet, scrappy crochet bag project. It might not look like I did anything, but compare the footage from last, last podcast episode. I did like two rounds. It's because I will be doing something, I'll be working on something and I get sick of doing it. So I'll knit like, I'll, or I'll crochet like one row and then I'll put it down and then I'll go do something else and then I'll see this again and then I'll crochet one row and then I'll, I'll go do something else. So that's why this progress is so slow on this. Uh, but it'll get there. This is not a race. This, this is just, you know, for fun. So I think it's fine. I went a bit feral. I feel like this is why maybe I shouldn't have so much yarn just like out in the open because I see the yarn and I just want to cast it on. I did a poll on Instagram with some, one of the yarns that I'm going to show. And I, it was for like a hat or a glove, uh, for gloves, or if I should work on some, my work in progress is, and all of the answers were for oh, work on your work in progress. So I did do that. I did finish the socks. That's why I finished the socks before I cast this guy on. So don't judge me, you guys. I tried, okay? I'm just, I'm just feral, I'm feral for yarn. All right. So this is the the yarn in question. And this yarn is Biz Sock again from the advent calendar yarn that I got last year. And it's an unusual color. It's very springy, you know? It's got the yellow and the green. This is not something that I will wear typically because I think I look pretty bad in green. Um, but I just wanted to use this up because I was staying there. and. I held this together with, what is this guy? Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the colorway Dusty Artichoke. And once that runs out, because I do not have a lot of that, this I'm going to replace it with uh, Katya Concepts 50 Shades of Mohair, I think is what it's called. I don't know the color name of this. I'll put it in the description box, but it's kind of this like greenish yellowish. So. I think it goes well with the yellow parts and it's going to kind of tone down the green parts or tone, I don't know, you know what I mean. <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting. And the pattern that I'm using to knit is uh, the Oslo hat by Petit Knit. Petit Knit again, I'm sorry. But the thing with Petit Knit is, or this particular hat is, I don't really like hats like this on me. So why am I knitting it, right? I just, you know, I just got so sick of knitting hipster hats. Um, I do have another one on the needles, which I'm going to talk about after this. But yeah, it's so, I, I just wanted to knit something stock knit. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that I used all of this yarn. Um, this, I actually didn't even check like if this is going to be able to make an awesome hat. So I might run out of yarn actually. Wow, I really need to plan better. But I just thought this color, like 
I don't know. I thought it would just look better as an also hat with just like straight stock net than um, something ribbed. So that's why I'm doing that. And you know, if this turns out and it doesn't look good on me, I'm going to give it to my boyfriend or something. So there's always somebody who needs a hat, right? So it's this is simply for the sake of just me knitting something and then to get it like a small portable project that's just straight stock in it. Except I don't go outside, so I don't know why I did this. And I already have socks that I could use on the subway, so. I'm telling you, the brain worms, the feral, the feralness. Oh, we have another hipster hat by Petite Knit. Uh, this is another scrap stash busting project, kind of. Um, I'm knitting this for a friend. I don't think she watches my podcast, so I don't think this is going to be a problem. But uh, if you are watching this, and I recently asked you about if you want a hat and what color, uh, look away, I guess. <laughs> this um, is knit with Lion Brand Scarfy in the color navy slash denim, I believe. And I had previously used this to make a scarf for another friend and I had some leftover so I think I had like this much leftover so I think a hat will be perfect um and why this is in this tube form is because I fed it through the uh, uh the central knitting machine because I thought maybe I could make like a small like neck warmer kind of thing with like a loop I might still do that with a different yarn because I think the concept is nice and it could be done it's just i didn't have enough yarn for that with this so it's going to be turned into a hipster hat and i think it's coming on very well it is not to gauge uh so i i feel a little bit weird calling it a hipster hat because it's definitely not to gauge and i'm not following any stitch like i'm not following any stitch counts so it's just a two by two ribbed hat basically uh but it is it is my favorite uh, hat pattern to knit just because it's so simple and you could do it pretty mindlessly and the edge here is two by two tubular cast on um, and I always find that a little bit of a you know interesting mental challenge before I <laughs> go to the body of the hat I suppose so that's why. So those are some of my projects that I cast on while I was in that feral mood. And we have the last work in progress. This is, I just opened that. And this is another thing too, like all my project bags, I don't think I have any dedicated project bags for knitting. I didn't, I really wanted to get the petite knit, um, quilted bags, but then I don't know. I just couldn't really justify buying that. And then I entered my no buy year. So I really didn't need that. So I've been using these kind of like, if you buy, you know, bags or like clothes, sometimes you know how you get these um, dust bags, drawstring bags. That's what I use. I have so many of these um, from my past uh, days where I actually bought clothes online. So in sock, <laughs> another toe up sock. This is going to be like a scrappy striped one. I'm really trying to stash bust here and I have 50 grams of this. I think it's, this is also Biz Sock from Biscotti Yarns. This is from the advent calendar. Um, Biz Sock again. I have this much left over of the uh, cream color sock yarn that I use for the ruffle socks. So I have this. So I could have done like a contrast like toe heel thing. But then I just, I don't know, I just wanted to use everything that I had, so, or everything that I felt like went together, so I also have this, I don't know if you can see that, it's like, it's got silver flecks in it, this is a sock yarn that I got from a indie dyer on Etsy, I don't think she dyes anymore, but her Etsy shop was called like Catnap Indie Yarns or something, I'll leave it down here somewhere uh so i have some of this left too and i haven't really decided on like the the stripey pattern but i'm just gonna do whatever i want basically like i this this is going to probably take up like a big band and then 
maybe I'll switch to this and then knit like two rows and then I'll switch to this and knit two rows just to kind of like break it up um so I don't think the two socks are going to be the same looking but uh I think that's also like a cute look too so that's what's gonna happen and this is the same vanilla pattern that I use for literally all of my socks which is actually there is I realized that I was like how did I where did I learn to knit toe up and there is a pattern that I use like a recipe um that is I think it used to be free because it was part of a sock sock along but then um the the creator uh changed it and it's now you gotta pay for it but I think it's worth um because it gives you pretty detailed instructions and there's youtube videos linked to it um you could also watch you could just watch the youtube videos as well but that's basically the pattern or um the recipe and the ratio that i use for all of my um toe up socks so i will link that uh in the description box if you want to check that out and also leave somewhere <laughs> on the screen so hmm, i think i think that's everything wow my my floor looks crazy right now with all the work in progresses that I've laid out. Um, I need to stop casting on more things for now. Like until I finished um, all these small projects or if, until I finish like some of these big projects because it's getting really out of hand. And I'm also going kind of stir crazy thinking about uh, summer knits as well. I'm planning to make a video about some summer knit planning i just ha i just wanna i just have so many things that i want to knit and not enough hands <laughs> this is so chaotic like um i need another set of hands i just need to get away from this like fast fashion consumption mindset still i feel like not that i really bought fast fast fashion in a really long time um i did this challenge it like two years ago where i only bought second hand i didn't buy any newly manufactured clothing unless it was like underwear or socks but then that was like a very easy challenge for me even shoes i didn't buy anything new i bought shoes second hand as well and since then i haven't really bought a lot of things new it's just like once you may have that switch over it's so much easier to do because you've already done it so i'm hoping this like year of no buy will do that for me as well acquisitions i do have one i it's not bought it's it's an acquisition um i made a post on instagram that i will insert a clip of i had made this uh in my beginning years i was as a knitter i made i made a uh, sweater number 11 the 12 I don't know I, like my, my favorite things knitwear all of the I I can't I don't know dude like the numbers man I know it's a branding thing but I feel like for the sake of maybe they need to give them names you know just a thought I just can't ever remember the numbers anyways I it was their drop shoulder turtleneck and I knit it with Debbie Bliss cash merino baby cash merino I think was the yarn and I had it for two years and I just didn't wear it enough. So I unraveled all of it. <laughs> so that's my acquisition. Now I have a sw sweaters quantity of this like um, minty, gr uh, I don't know, it's a green. Do you think this is green? It's like greenish gray, like a warm gray. Um, it's a nice color and I, I, I liked the overall idea of that garment but i didn't like it as it was and i think florence from florence from the her knitting podcast <laughs> she had the same qualms about like that particular sweater pattern i think it's sweater number 11 but it's the way that it's constructed is it's drop shoulder but then the arm side isn't very large so you don't get a lot of it you don't get a lot of um, arm space in the arms and it's kind of skinny. Um, so you get this like big boxy shape in the midsection of your body and then you have skinny arms. And it, it could be a look, but it was not a look for me. <laughs> I understand why they did it because they like, I guess you want to reduce the number of or reduce the amount of bunching fabric in the armpit area 
Um, if you just do a straight, like regular drop shoulder tube, you can have a lot of extra fabric in here that might not be as good um, to look at. So I get why they did that. And it also like had details about like shoulder, like adding short rows in the sleeve. So you kind of get this like sleeve cap effect. But I just didn't like the fit on me. Like, I don't think that fit really looks that great on me. And it was also too short, just a little bit too short where I just didn't feel, every time I lifted my arms, basically you could see my stomach and I was not happy about that. So that's why I didn't wear it as much. Um, but I finally bit the bullet and then and now I have this yarn. And I think what I wanna do with it is make a cardigan, but like a cabled cardigan, not just, like a classic kind of cable although i did see a pinterest um a photo on pinterest of a cardigan that had the pattern stitch pattern very similar to um rebecca from the crea Vale. she um her dorney sweater that pattern it looked like that but it was a cardigan and I was like, oh, that looks really good. So I thought about doing that, just like buying her pattern and then like either modifying it to be knit in the flat or to like knit it and then stick it down the middle. But I don't know, I don't think I want that. Um, and kind of what I was thinking was, I don't know if you guys know the brand Doen, um, but they have these chunk, kind of chunky-ish uh, cardigans that have these um, kind of diamond cable I don't know what those are called um, but they're cables but just in like this like diamond shape and the inside the diamond they have stuff in them and I think Sari Nordland has a couple of similar patterns and I, I'm sure it, it's not something that this brand made up for real so it's like there has to be a pattern already out um, with that kind of vibe and I'm like thinking do I want a collar on that cardigan or do I just want it to, but I do want it to be around that cardigan because I think I have enough v-necks for now. So that's the vibe that I'm going for. Um, obviously I'm not gonna be done with it for any, you know, wearing season, but you know, in the fall, I think it'll be cute. So that's what I'm thinking. But for now I have this sweater's quantity of yarn and I feel much better about it now that I have in, in this um, caked up form rather than um, as a sweater sitting in my drawers because I need the drawer space. I live in New York. I don't have a lot of storage <laughs> and all my clothes are just in a dresser and um, in a tiny little closet. So I could use space. That's it. I really, you know, this was a so chaotic episode and I'm, I just realized I had the ceiling fan going so you could probably hear that. I'm going to play the footage back um, and I hope it's not too annoying, but that's what it is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> that's it um thank you for joining me on this podcast episode again i really appreciate it and i hope wherever you are you're having a great day and uh i will see you guys in the next video next week all right bye <laughs> goodbye